Hello, I'm in Puar, Michigan, with the wind blowing on my f the wind blowing on my face. <laughs> Hey guys, welcome back to our channel. Oh yeah, welcome back. Hope you're thirsty. <laughs> yes, uh, I'm Jun from Gen T, and I'm Phil, also from Gen T. <laughs> and as we said, we're thirsty. We're, we're doing a quick tea session. It's yeah. literally we just did some cleaning job, and uh, just want to have a relaxing tea moment. And we will be tasting an experiment tea guanyin that we made a while mm. ago. I haven't tasted this specific tea for quite a while, so and we'll I'll explain see. the tea plate <laughs> later. Okay. Well, yeah, let's get brewing. <laughs> I am parched. This cleaning made me thirsty. If this is the first time you brew. Yeah, I was going to say, if you're paying <laughs> close attention, you'll notice that everything just shifted, and I always set up to kind of nudge the brewing to Gen, mostly because I'm lazy. And one of the troubles here at Gen Tea is. We have a master brewer, so it's really nice when she brews, but it can lead to me getting rusty. So I'm gonna brew today and stay in great shape. So um, so today we're brewing this experimental Tae Guan Yin. Oh, and why are we using such an interesting tea display device? Well, interesting. <laughs> a, little, a little plate, because we're in Michigan. We're not at home and we don't We're have... in poor Michigan. <laughs> yeah, poor Michigan. The slogan of the state is pure Michigan. So um, I might warm Would you like to use that? At first yeah. you gotta warm up the vessel. I'm gonna warm the vessel, yeah. Uh. See why I need to stay in shape? Because I got rusty. So <laughs> here we go. We're gonna warm the vessel a bit, especially today. If you'll notice how bundled we are, yes. it's because it's um, it's uh, cool. Uh, cool, it's really cool. What, like a 10 degree today when we woke up? Yeah, 12 or 13, not much, really close to 10. And, f and we're here in Michigan, so we should say 55 degrees. They still use Fahrenheit, and so does our thermostat. Um, so really annoying. Get the lid a little bit warm, even. I can tell he's very nervous. Oh, I'm not nervous. You're I'm not. Just, no, I'm well, just your rusting. hand is uh, hovering there. Like I feel like your brain is thinking, "Oh, one next, one next." Mm -hmm. A little bit. A little bit. I'm always hovering. Okay. So here we are. I somehow don't like to get the tea table too wet. So it's pretty tricky when you are brewing and you have to talk. Don't you feel? Oh, big time. Okay. Big time. I'm always struggling with brewing and talking. So feel free to talk. Me? For me. Yeah. Oh, okay. So we're in a little farm in Michigan. Really secluded area where we... Uh, why you smile? Well, because we're on a farm in Michigan and it is. It's very secluded. <laughs> Uh, even though a car, it's just that your smell threw me off. No, even though and a car just went behind us, we're all at the we're halfway, more than halfway down a dead end road, a dead end mm -hmm. farm road, here in rural Michigan. Yes. Um, but the view is really, I quite like that. This is not a kind of farm that is like you know. Uh, I'm sorry. What was that about? Uh, it's a guy. I thought it was a guy one, so I just want to get the leaf to level up. Oh. We're gonna give that leaf a, a smell in a moment. <laughs> Anyway, it's not a, like a, a farm like you would imagine with, uh, uh, you know, chickens, ducks, and all kinds of veggies. It's a more uh, industrial style, mm. industrial style. Crop farm. He crop farm. It. Yeah, crop so farm. So soybean, uh, wheat, corn. Yeah, yeah. Those but kind of it's still, and they have little woods, uh, small patches of woods around. So uh, it's very new and uh, exciting for me. To and be me. Here. You, even you. Yeah. Okay. Oh yeah. Yeah, it's. it's um, it's a not a traditional spot to, to you know, to be camping or having a trailer. Sorry, I'll let you grab that and have a smell. It's you will see how awkward we are. <laughs> fruity. It's quite fruity, and um, even the dry leaf had a really it has nice that roastiness. Age, age roasty, but a little bit of the age. You mm. know, when the tea got aged, it started to have that raisin plum, the dried plum, the oh. concentrated sweet with the tartness there. Mm, I got the I sweet. I missed the uh, tart and I didn't get much of the age, but let's oh, see fruity. It... And I see what's your mm. fruity me, but for me it's a really dried fruit. It's not fresh fruit, so that kind of uh, mm. notes. Yeah, reminds me of the uh, cran the dried cranberries in that salad we had the other mm. day. Buru-ing, buru-ing. Yeah, 
That's uh, Chinese, everybody. The ruing. Three syllables. Bu that's, ruing. Is that three syllables? Uh, the way you said it is. Bu ruing. It's not. You three. wouldn't understand what I'm saying. It's not three <laughs> syllables in English. It's two. Oh, oh two? Yeah, bu ing. Oh, it's a bu. Oh, okay. We have these discussions a lot because there's different ways to break down syllables. Yeah, like imagine like how Chinese call like an English name. What's a good one? They might not know. How. Thomas would be three syllables for you. Would that Thomas be no, three two. syllables? Two, right? Thomas in Chinese is Thomas. So three letters, whereas it feels like a three syllables. Oh, let's give the, uh, the rinse leaf a smell. Mm. I'm pretty excited to try oh, this. Oh, this is that uh, Tie Guan Yin smell mm. that I love. Yeah, really, oh. the the rinsed leaf aroma is it has a a foreshadow of the coming Chinese orchid aroma. Yeah, and it's it's quite, not booming. Yes, it's subtle, but it's there. It's very mm -hmm. deep. It's it it has a layer of a creamy thickness yeah, there in yeah. the smell. In the terms ropes. of a, normally when we talk about uh, orchid flavor. Or orchid aroma. We were talking about those thin little white flowers, like almost a little bit of floating kind of a there and there, there and here kind of thing. What? Well, I feel like you can almost feel me counting in my head. I really, I can feel <laughs> the, the the nervous, the the non on cam brewing. Dun yeah. dun dun. dun. <laughs> oh, I think I'm close. Maybe a little I think over. It's pretty good. Okay, so like one. we always talk about, we, I'm, I'm gauging, I'm not really triming seconds, I'm a little bit counting in my head because I'm rusty, but I'm also, and the guy one here is opaque and it's hard to peek with the lid in this travel set, which I really love this set, but anyway, liquor color is the key. Um, check out there, some of our other videos about that. Right, and if you also have a travel set that is in this kind of a format, which means like a, a big, strainer. Yeah, the big basically. basket strainer and stuff. Sometimes you will notice that if you see some of the liquor color, and when you really lift the strainer, the yes. basket out, the liquor will <laughs> much get more intense. Deeper. Yes. So you gotta dial in when do you start. Leave to some add. space. Exactly. You know, pull it out a little bit to the light side. Mm -hmm. Let me give you a little wipe on the bottom. Thank you. Ooh. And let me get a wipe on the bottom. This aroma is more similar to the dry leaf aroma rather than the wet leaf aroma. A little bit more sweet. Mmm. Definitely has that dried fruit. Oh boy. When we talk about age, how, when, what year is this tea? Do you recall precisely? 2016. I was partially participated in the make. So. Yeah, I was about to say that's an interesting tea trip year for Gen T because Jen was on the tea trip and I was not. I was holding down the fort and updating live. There's plenty of, um, if you go check out our blog on the website at gent.ca, there's lots of cool blogs from that trip. Um, you went to Fuding, if I recall. Mm -hmm. That was while Shitai and Shifu were still in the cave like they live mm. it sounds really like they're not cave people <laughs> but they actually like when i visited in 2019 i went to fooding they had really expanded their operations so i mm. mean actually both of those pieces both of those visits are available check them out on our website it's really neat to see the mm. progression of uh and the success of our mm. tea friends uh makes me really happy and um it's interesting that you made Tae Guan Yin. I'm going to guess you were also uh, visiting... Um, oh. I know there's the Xiao and the... Sanhai. Xiao Sanhai, Xiao Sanhai. And that's not his <laughs> real name, but there's the son and the da dad. Sanhai Jr. <laughs> Sanhai Jr. You might not know. <laughs> you will not know. But no. You did not know, but you will know. Because we're going to tell you. <laughs> you must be so confused. Yeah, we had a glitch. We lost some footage. 
because the car was full. Uh, yeah, so. so we're talking about, I think, Xiao Sanhai, Sanhai, Taeguan Yim Farm. And yeah, we lost a bunch of stuff, so we're just going to try and pick up kind of in that zone. Mm -hmm. We're not going to repeat what we said. That's lost forever. Um, but I don't remember what I said. <laughs> well, 20, just the interesting parallels between the 2016 tea trip that I was not on, because mm. fooding and um, the visit to the Taeguan Yin, uh, you know, Sanhai's place, were both in there. And then we went back in 2019, and I got to experience... The growth in both places was astonishing and really pleasant, you know. I think um, that's the part we did mention, and the car might have happened. So if there's a little bit of duplication, you're going to have to deal with it. <laughs> Sorry about that. Um, <laughs> back to the T. But as an experimental... What the attitude you have, Oh eh? yeah, I'm a, I'm, a, I'm, a, I'm a little bit badass. Anyway, uh, when it comes to take one in as an experimental... Maybe we can come back to the T. You mentioned in the beginning of the video that this is an experimental Taeguan Yin. Mm -hmm. um, I don't want to put you on the spot, but what's going on with it? What's the experiment? Was it a success? It seems like it. It's um. So if it's a success, it depends on what do you think and what when people taste it. You're so right. a little bit. Of what's the experimental part of it? It was because this. Tea is is made with really old Taiwan uh, implants. So oh, so it's not just aged in the sense that it was made in so 2016. So it's the plant that is aged, and plus the we the wouldn't finish. say aged. The plant is oh. actually aged. It's old, it's an old plant, a right. very mature. Like the bush has been around for what twenty over twenty, over years, 20 years, and is not maintained. You know, even though we think about the tea bushes are like, uh, you know, the, like a uh, waist high, uh, that's pretty high, or lower is a really bushy, small thing. But when you don't maintain it, because of yearly pruning, it, it's just you know kind of contained. Like man's hair, once it's cut, it's short, but you have potential to go all the way to the waist, which <laughs> for some men, it really depends on your health. <laughs> so for the tea plant, when it's not maintained to grow there, uh, it's become bushy and tall and I had to really reach over it to bend the little branch because it's a still a bush type of a plant it's not a tree it doesn't have a that kind of main trunk so mm. it's a very uh, uh, flexible the branches were really right. flexible you can really grab it down and pluck it uh, and the, the the cultivar itself is a little bit mix of Tieguanyin and Huangjinggui wow so uh, when well, make that is a little bit first uh, challenging because you know what happens when the tea are the tea plants are growing different areas or uh, of different ages mm. the leaves are different the mm. the so what's in it the thickness how yeah. leathery or soft like there's a little things that's different with the leaves so when you ex like when you process it, so you have to dial in. And you have to consider that yeah. that difference and kind of compromise, so that mm. neither one leaf isn't just beat to heck, mm. and the other leaf is you know underdone. You got to kind of find that sweet spot. Right. Wow. And uh, when we do this, you know, it's not like a we're because we've never processed this specific batch before, so it was it was a little bit of a trying our best and not to mention that was also my first time to do that there was a lot of questioning so you taste mm. that you still taste the cultivar you taste the process but there's something different is that off as a negative thing or positive thing i don't think it's a, a straight like oh undesired or straight really good it's just something different there that maybe it puts to different people's preferences mm. Right. Right. So that's cool, and I would say for me, this is really successful. It's got some buttery, some buttery notes. It's got that earlier on. It had that really sweet mm. dried fruit. Gardenia. Mm, gardenia now. Gardenia. Floral is coming out. It's changing profile. I noticed that mm -hmm. sweetness is kind of sinking into these other notes. This buttery mm. gardenia floral, really delicious sip. Um, this is a later infusion because. We missed the middle part of the yeah. tea, but yeah. it's quite different. 
mm. right from yeah. the first infusion yeah. to later on to this area this area these later infusions it's a uh, yeah it's I didn't really transformed i didn't spot the gardenia in early time that's right yeah it was a subtle there was some subtle sweet floral i mentioned the um, chinese orchid in fact on the dry leaf even mm -hmm. now it's a bit more of that thick creamy gardenia creamy really yeah really creamy. creamy yeah and i'm getting a little uh chatsy burping on the go here uh, i'm keeping it quiet though keeping it pg for the kids <laughs> we didn't do that uh bar no what's his name the guy who burped super loud in oh, Simpsons. Oh, um, Barney. Barney. Barney was the alcoholic. I love that. <laughs> who doesn't love Barney? <laughs> Ripley Tom. <laughs> the town drunk. Okay, this is a little bit odd. Because when I first saw that cartoon and how he burped with the tom out, I'm like, you cannot burp with the tom out. <laughs> oh, yeah. And I tried it. Good eye for think. detail. <laughs> it's just odd. Mm, yeah, but it definitely did the trick. Mm -hmm. So one of my earlier infusions was a little bit, uh, I wouldn't say I, I massacred it. I didn't go too far, but it was a little bit punchy. So I'm a little bit more in out. My leaf amount is really, um, I would say pretty bang much, on. yeah, pretty much bang on for this vessel. I find it really tricky in a travel set. Okay, maybe it's the travel set or maybe it's because I'm dialed into kind of the tea where I'm used to. At home, we've got kind of our three favorite guy wands, a little one, a medium one, and a large one for simplicity's sake. And I'm kind of dialed in for pretty much all the tea types on those vessels. This vessel is pretty new to me. And so I've been, I'm actually just reflecting on this now, but I've been saying, oh, it's because it's a travel set, which may or may not be true because indeed the you know, the way the leaf is gathered in this strainer is a little bit more concentrated. The vessel's actually larger. Also, Jen mentioned earlier, which I think is in, is that sometimes you see the liquor color in the travel set, then you pull it and all the densely colored liquor was hiding in the leaf and it drops out and you easy to overshoot. So I was, I've fallen prey to that on numerous occasions. And I think I'm starting to come into my stride with this uh, setup, with this vessel. So uh, I don't know if you find the same thing with your, like when you get a new vessel, let me know down below. It'll make me feel good if you also, <laughs> if you also need to dial in your skills. Um, you know, at Gen T, I represent the newbie. I'm, you know, and so that's my job. I'm not ashamed to say like, you know, this is fun and stuff. And it's, you know, I really encourage you to not get too crazy about the temperature and the duration and the perfect, perfect infusion better to taste your infusion, look at your liquor color and dial it in. For me, I think that's much more transportable. When you do go to a new vessel, you will be more like a Kung Fu master. You'll be able to just dial that in quickly. You won't be relying on these strict metrics to get the perfect brew. You'll be able to smell, look, eventually listen. I'm not there yet. She can listen to the water and the leaf. Uh, sounds crazy, but you know, like anything, with with hours and hours of experience, who knows? Right? Dialing it in. Yes. Yeah. I was just going to add it in terms of uh, that. I don't think it's, um, I don't think it's a simple, it's just you're used to the guy one shape. Different mm -hmm. shapes have different implications and the volumes. You're mm -hmm. just not used yeah. to it. Yeah. Or sometimes, I guess for me, whenever I'm about to brew, I think a lot, which that's I, my biggest challenge. I for don't. Sure. How should I say now? Because it's uh, intuitive already, I don't really think like, oh, I gotta think this. No, it just happens. So I just uh, somehow put this amount with reason, with no, not reasoning to myself. So I started to do videos to help explaining my. Uh, thought process like how to brew I, it's almost like yeah, dissecting like, like you're myself. really backing up and dissecting your own unconscious yeah. process yes. that's developed over time and sharing yes. it with people yes yeah that's an awesome series definitely check that out yeah so I think it's just a, a moment a second of a think would really help you 
yes. solve this kind of issue. Yeah, that's my challenge is remembering right. to think sometimes because often I'm, well, I am not often, I'm the vast majority of the time, the morning tea maker, which is again, a thoughtless, I'm, I've gotten to the point where I know that vessel inside out and I just throw that together. But mm -hmm. when I'm approaching a new situation, I got to have that little stop and actually consciously think I'm not quite there to unconsciously adapt. But that's the Kung Fu kind of stuff I'm talking about. If you keep intuitive brewing and apply that thought, you will get to that. Maybe I think I'll get to that level. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, this video is coming to an end, but this tea is not. So we're going to keep brewing it. <laughs> and, um, because it's delicious and it's still got some good legs. Mm -hmm. um, so if you enjoyed the video, please give us a thumbs up, <laughs> click yes. the notify bell so that you'll know whenever we create a new video. And of course, uh, if you love what we're doing here or even just pretty much like it, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It would help us out a lot and we'd appreciate having you, you know, in the club, on the scene, hanging with us and all that jazz. <laughs> Until next time. <laughs> <laughs> Until next time. Keep, keep steeping. Bye-bye.